So I'm going to create an example of an array in C sharp for manipulating an array using uh, loops. And in this case, write a program named array demo um, that stores an array of 10 integers. It's already given us that. We have an array, these square brackets, we have an array called nums and only integers can be stored in this array. So we assign, and in curly braces, we put 10 random integers separated by a comma in there. Okay, so we have an array called nums with 10 integers in it. Okay, until the user enters a sentinel value, allow the user four options. Uh, view the list in order from first to last, from last to first, uh, specific position to view. Okay, so in position zero, which is the first position, uh, we would display the value seven. Okay, and the last option four is to quit the application. So I'm going to do this in Visual Studio. It's a little faster to write and helps me with uh, um, spelling and other things, so I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio. And <clears throat> so on my list, I want to choose an option one through four. So create an integer data type, call it option. And now I'm going to put in my menu or list of choices. So I'll pop that in there. Pretty basic, just right line statements saying uh, selection number one, view, uh, view the list in order from first to last, and then from last to first, choose a specific position to view, and quit the application. And then I say, enter option one through four. And then from the keyboard, the user enters um, options one through four, hopefully. And then I need to, since it's read line, read line is when it reads it in, it reads it in as a string. And um, so I, I'm going to convert that string number whatever was typed in, into an integer, and then store that in option. Oh, and by the way, in here I'm using this statement right here, where I'm using static system console, so I don't have to write system.console.writeline, uh, a little shortcut that uh, can be used. Okay, so... Let's see, go ahead and try this. I'm gonna debug, start debugging, just check to see if everything's working okay. So debug, start debugging. And even though it's not doing anything with the value, I can type in a value here. Okay, and that ends the program. Okay, so I've got that part of it. So now, once one of those selections is chosen, um, I need to output this array for selection number one, output the uh, array from first to last. Okay, so here's a pretty fundamental way to do this. And in this example, I'm going to use just simple if statements. And my first if statement is going to be if the user selected number one. So I'm going to pop the rest of the code in there. Um, <clears throat> so inside of this loop, while the option is not number four, um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have an if statement that says if option was one was selected in this case I'm going to 
have a loop, and this is going to be a for loop. Um, and my for loop says, I'm going to start off with an integer called i, assign the value 0 to it. Here's my first semicolon, the first part of my for statement. So I'm establishing the counter. And now the test. Is i less than the length of this array called num? So the length of this array should be 10. Right? There's 10 elements in here. So is i less than the length of this array? If that's true, then after this iteration, I'm going to increment by 1. First time through, um, i is going to be 0. So this write statement says, write, um, and this is a placeholder, the value of, the, of uh, what's in the array called nums at this position. So the first time through, um, the first time through this loop, i is going to be equal to 0, and position 0 is going to be 7. The next time through, i is going to be 1, which is position which is going to be value 6, and the next time 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 9. So 0 through 9. And of course 0 through 9 is 10 positions. Okay. Um, and the logic is a little funky in starting when you start counting at 0. So it takes a little practice to get used to looking at things that way. Uh, so I've got a write statement, and the write statement writes the value. You notice I've got a space here. And so it'll write the value, space, next value, space, next value, space. Uh, to go to the next line, what I'm going to do is just put a console write line. Other ways to do it, but that'll work. Okay, if it's option two, we want to display this array in reverse order. So why not just have a loop which display which counts backwards. So we start off with the length of the array minus one. Okay, again that's counting from zero. The length of the array is ten, but counting Starting from zero, the very last element is going to be nine. Okay, so as long as that, as long as we are not going to be less than zero, we should be okay. And then we decrement j each time. So the first time through, um, num is nine. Next time through, num is eight, seven, six, all the way down until. Uh, we get to zero and then we drop out. So <clears throat> in our array we start with this one and then this one and then this one. Okay, so we go backwards. And then option three. And if it's option three, then enter a specific position to view. And I put this, I'll put this on a separate line. So we read in from the keyboard, convert it into an integer, the position that the user, the user wants to see. What position in the array does the user want to see? And so we display, we say at position, and then give that position. The value is, and we go to our array call nums, and display whatever's in that position. So at position 8, so if the user typed in 8, we would go to nums position 8. And if I go up here, nums position 8. So is nums position 8 the 5 or the 9? Okay, try it out and see. And then we're all done. And as long as it wasn't 4, 
we're uh, ready to start again. So what I'll do is that inside of this while loop, I'm just going to display this again. And then we're ready to start all over, start the loop all over again. Okay. And that's pretty much it. That's a, that's a pretty basic one. So I'm going to leave that one um, for now. And what I'm going to do is show you a better version of this that uses um, some statements that uh, we haven't used before. So I'm going to pop that. I'm going to replace that version with, with this one. So, so in this version, I've made a special little structure called an enumeration and an enumeration is just a it's like an array uh, only it's a little more descriptive so here's an enumeration called menu and in this case the first is saying uh, is just <clears throat> is just a, a one of the menu items and the first one is called in original order and reverse order and then specific position and quit so the other things that we had in the other in the other example only <clears throat> we've got the uh, the list here in an enumeration. Now these enumerations uh, can be referenced by a number, by an integer value. And so normally this would be position zero, but I can change that to say that this is actually position one. And so that would mean this one would be two, three, and four. A little easier to remember if um, okay so <clears throat> here we have an array we're starting off with our position um, uh, which uh, which option that we select which one of these that we select and and then we're saying uh, in right line choose one of the one of these options and so what this will do is that so here's a handy way to handle the enumeration we're going to use a for each and a for each loop goes through every element that's in the list And in this case, it's saying in the enumeration, there's a method called get the names. And that's a string. So each one of these strings, one, two, three, four, each one of these strings, go get each one of those one at a time. And so as it goes through the loop, it does just that. It gives us the position and Here's the first position, one. So that one's going to be two, three, and, and four. Um, and then it gives us the menu option, which is that string. So it's going to say this, and then this, and then this, and then that. OK. And then increment the position by one each time. So it should say one, and then menu option which will be in original order two, reverse order so on and so forth okay um, so after it displays that then it's going to say enter a value from one to four um, and then convert whatever's typed into option same as the other example okay while the option is not uh, menu item quit or four um, then go ahead and um, execute this. And so this is going to be the same as the 
previous example, the difference being that instead of just uh, simple if statements, we're going to have if else and then else if. And you literally should use your finger to trace the logic on these. Use your fingers to trace what is going to be the first value as it goes through and trace out the logic for that each time as it, go through, as it goes through. Um, and then basically it does the same thing as the, the other one before. Okay, let's try and see if it's working. Debug, start debugging. Uh, enter value from one to four. So I'll try one. And there it's in uh, the original order. Two reverses the order. Three specific position. I'll go with position two. And the value of position two is zero, one, two. The value is three. Okay. And then four for quit. Okay. That's it.